What's up, everybody? Thank you for uh, joining tonight. Remember, this guy said that he only had four M80s. Does anybody remember that? Four M80s? That looks like more than four M80s to me. This is going to be a short show. I want to do this properly. I'm doing this from my phone, which is not the ideal way to do it. But I want to show you guys something. I want to play you guys a video. Because this guy wants to uh, make comments about me. Well. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there was, know, all, was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. Let's play that again. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there. Was I know. All was legally bought, and I would trade and sell them. That was the night MRE got exposed on April 26, 2022, when Dobbin and Korea said it was cited that he bought the guns legally. Can he provide any proof? Dominic, can you provide any proof that he bought the guns legally? Just curious. Now, you wouldn't go out and say that you vetted this guy when you didn't. Did you know this guy was a neo-Nazi confidential informant before he was exposed? Did you know who he was, but you didn't vet him? Because it's my understanding, I could be wrong, it's my understanding you knew his identity before he was exposed. Because you had sent him packages or something, with we push back t-shirts or hats, something, something to that effect. I'm not saying that's a fact. It's my understanding. I may be wrong. Regardless, where was it cited that he bought the guns legally? Let's see some comments here. Keyboard Thug said, Hell yeah, more shit to expose this scumbag lowlife. And anyone who support... Well, let's see some other comments here. Hi, Jesse. How are you tonight? Route Irish, this is going to be a great show, not for Nazi boy, though. Nope, he really shouldn't have gone out there and lied about me. He should have just walked away after I published that letter. Or admitted I was telling the truth, because I was. The, uh, yeah, this is going to be a short show. I'm going to show you guys a couple of things real quick. Now, I put in the description that we're going to discuss another criminal case of his from 2009 that he didn't do time for. That's what this mugshot is from. 2009, he was uh, driving on the highway in Rhode Island. He hit another car while he was switching lanes and took off. Didn't stop, you know, for an accident report or whatever. And the lady followed him called the police. The police set up on the highway. They pull him over. He has no license. <laughs> this is as a convicted felon. Anybody else probably at least would have got a couple of weeks in jail. Something. What happened in his case? All the evidence points to this guy is a longtime confidential informant cooperator some some kind of informant now the ATF describes an M80 as a common illegal explosive that's what they call it illegal federally illegal this is just a fireworks store i pulled up I don't know if you can see the bottom of it there, but it's, I think it says keystonefireworks.com or just look up the text in this image. It's saying M80s are not fireworks. They're explosives. Now, is it C4 that's going to blow up an entire building? No. But this guy said he was caught with, what, just four M80s? He was caught with over 20 M-class devices. One of which was 
an improvised explosive device. Improvised explosive device can mean many things. Many things. This is uh, from the evidence photos. This is an x-ray that was done on the, uh, on the M-class explosives he was caught with, which are illegal. The one there on the left is, the, is this one. It was an M-class device wrapped up, fitted with 35 separate pieces of buckshot ball bearings in different sizes which upon explosion could have gone in many different directions and killed a lot of people and there was also a if you see here that circle there was a ring shaped object and there was also a plastic object in there what was he doing with that was he selling illegal fireworks explosives whatever you want to call them That's a lot more than four that he claimed. These are evidence photos. Now, there, there is a little bit more I learned about the situation. But I got to do a little bit more research before I speak on it. But now let me show you something. Hang on a second. I don't know if we, you know, I gotta uh, edit that appropriately, but that's from uh, one of the evidence reports. Law enforcement sensitive. I believe it's of the public in interest. Look at this. What was he doing with something like this? What are you gonna do with something like that? What you, is, it, is it a field test? You're gonna make more of them? Why did they raid this guy's house? Because it said in the documents that, yeah, there was a, a tip from somebody on Facebook that it was a felon with guns. And the police investigated for three weeks. Why did they take, I believe it was about three weeks to raid his apartment? What was the delay? Why didn't they just do it in four or five days? There was more to this situation. What was he doing with objects like this. Why? What did that say? Enemy of Israel? Yeah, he's probably celebrating right now that uh, a lot of people in, in Israel were slaughtered. It's a very sensitive situation. Israel versus Palestine. It's uh, the Israeli government is not perfect. Criticizing the Israeli government is not anti-Semitic as a general thing. The Israeli government is not perfect, like many governments. However, maybe like most governments, but slaughtering innocent people, whether they're Palestinians or Israelis or anybody else, not cool. MRE, the anti-American. No, there's nothing. What was this guy doing with a with an IED like this? What, what what was he doing with something like that? Why did he say he only had four M80s? Why did he lie about that? This guy lies about everything. Or lies about a lot. Keyboard thug. Well, bears that douchebag. MRE calls himself a mob rat exposed, but in fact, he's a rat whose case disappeared over and over. What a rat. Pretty obvious. Guess you support a neo-Nazi. Johnny M. Must too. Uh, I guess there was a person here named Johnny M. Who cares if he said they were M80s? No, he lied. He lied about a lot of people on here. He lied about me. I mean, you know what? I've said this before that people ask me, oh, do you think you would hurt someone? Like, a, you know, like one of these shootings or something like that. And I said, I, I, I hope not, but he could inspire somebody to by his words. But after reading the psychiatric evaluation that came into my possession, 
and seeing the demented shit in there with this guy. It, it's uh, demented shit. I don't know. If that's the right word. For, that's not the right word for it. There's a better way to phrase it. But he has very serious mental issues. And I'm not going to knock somebody for having mental issues that are beyond your control. You could be born with a chemical imbalance or whatever. But reading some of the stuff I read in there, do I think after reading that, do I think I believe he fits the profile to a T to one of these people? That's what I believe. Hitler on your arms, anti-Semitic. Yeah. Peace in the Middle East. Hopefully, hopefully one day. It's a, it's a bad situation out there, man. The Israel-Palestine thing, very bad situation. The, um... I'm going to play this again. Hang on a second. Oh, I believe this, they said he was 5'4", 220 pounds. And uh, I think that's what it says here. I'm doing this on my phone, so it's hard to read. But, yeah. Hits a lady's car on the highway. Keeps going. Gets pulled over. No license. Lies to the cop on top of it. Doesn't go to jail. Doesn't do time, I should say. Why not? Why not? Why? And there are, that was state police that pulled him over, and there are sealed files with the state police regarding this guy. Why? What was he doing with this? This kid's sick maniac put a smiley, a smiley face on a uh, an IED that theoretically, with 35 pieces of buckshot, theoretically could have killed 35 people. Why do you have so many M80s? Was he, was he selling them? What was he doing? Well, I can't, I'm not going to say those are all M80s. They're M-class devices. Was he going to turn them all into IEDs? I don't know. What we do know is that he lied. Remember this guy? Remember him? He was one of the people present at the uh, the Hitler party in 2019 that MRE helped organize. Now he's in prison. This guy was allegedly plotting, you know, to help instigate a race war in the, uh, in the United States. Dominic said he vetted this guy thoroughly. Angel said to me back in March, March 31st, I believe it was, he was thoroughly vetted by professionals, not by an amateur taking a guess. Did those professionals find out more about this when he was a suspect in sex crimes against juveniles? And what happened with that? What's the real story? Surely, if he was thoroughly vetted, they would know more about this incident. And there will be proof as to what happened. There would have been interviews with people to vet him. They would have went around and asked questions. What was he doing with this? What was this? What, what, what was the purpose for this? And why did he lie about it? That he had nothing like this? Did he have others like this? Remember, he was in photographs with an AK-47 assault rifle. Which he was not arrested with in 2015. Whatever happened to that AK? Based on federal involvement in this matter, the state is dismissing the state charges. The ATF took possession of that IED, I can tell you that. Remember this? Portions of this are redacted regarding that 2015 arrest including something that was discussed in the interview with him. Why did they redact that? What does that mean? Does it say he agreed to cooperate? Something to that effect?
this guy has mysterious case after mysterious. This guy, <laughs> this guy brought a neo-Nazi ex-police officer, disgraced ex-police officer, onto Angel Gotti's show, and then publicly lied that he even to this day lies. He doesn't know who the guy is. This guy co-hosted a neo-Nazi podcast with him. This image was used on the podcast. That was Jesus Christ standing in front of Auschwitz. These are sick, demented people. Sick, demented people. What was he doing with these? Uh, what was he doing with this? Let's see the comments here. One of his friends graced my page the other day with a slur. Sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that. The, uh, hang on a second. How do I drop the link? I want to drop the link. It's a pain in the ass to, oh, I'm just doing it. Give me a second. If anybody wants to come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a much more in-depth show on all this, but it just, I, I can't do it from my phone. I thought I'd be ready to do it tonight, but hang on. If anybody wants to come on, you're welcome, as long as you're not a scumbag, but... Tommy Lucchese said, don't you think it's creepy thinking about another man 24-7? I'm not. If I was, I would have found all this shit a long time ago. But I'm wrapping this up, and then I'm moving on to bigger things. I love to see the psych evaluation. You know, at this point, it's just a fucking distraction, to be honest, to be honest with you. But uh, I got to wrap this up because, you know, I got to find whatever's out there. I'm going to find it. And then I'm waiting on some things, and I'm sure there's much more to find. But you know what? I found enough. The government allowed a terrorist to roam free. I don't know if it's the right uh, way to put it. But he's a person with severe, severe mental issues who, you know, should not be allowed to own a gun, no less than an IED, and not go to jail. Hope karma catches up with Nikki. Lots of angry Jewish people out there. Karma catches up with, with us all eventually. I love to see the psych eval. He's a violent, hateful little person. Uh, no, I'll be honest with you. There was nothing in there about him being violent. If there was violence, it wasn't in, in there. You know. Also, it's uh, if somebody is violent, it doesn't mean you know the psychiatrist is going to know about it. But no, there was nothing in there saying he's a violent person. I'm not going to lie on the guy. The uh, some people only realize that he's anti-Semitic and not racist against blacks. Listen, who knows what he really is? I mean, I saw there was a um, a rally. I think it was like an anti-vaccine rally or something. So I forget what it was, but it was during COVID and the pandemic. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of his neo-Nazi podcast co-hosts was there like handing out anti-Semitic flyers, you know, like about, you know, the Jews and this and that. And they're going up to black people at this rally and, and they're trying to like get people, you know, they're trying to recruit people. Oh, look, you know, the Jews, they're, they're against us. They're against the white man. They're, they're against blacks. They're against these people, whatever. Right? And then I saw other clips of that same guy saying, you know, it's just, Jew, it's just the Jews. And then in private, calling black people Negroes and this and that, you know. That guy, Patrick Little, that MRE is friends with, he, um, one of his talking points to fellow white supremacists and neo-Nazis, etc. he was saying, he's, he's like, dude, don't go after everybody. That's what they want. Just focus on the Jews. Don't go after them. That's what they want. And now, it's, it's divide and conquer. But it, it's also that, yeah, it wouldn't make it a lot easier for these people to be taken down if they're going after everyone. But what's the word I'm looking for? It's a word I'm looking for. It's 
it's step one of you know white supremacy. It's just their step now. Are there different kinds of neo Nazis and white supremacists? Yes, there's different factions. Some of them are very religious, like it's called Christian identity. You can look it up. It's like a part one of the the factions. And there's other parts that are not for God and all that. They're not religious, you know. They're or they have a different version of religion. You know, there's different factions. So there could be technically neo Nazis who don't hate black people. They just hate Jewish people, or they don't hate Chinese. You know, there's different kind. There's different levels to to that, like everything else. Well, anti-Semitism is a form of racist, but yes, specifically a racism to Jews. Yeah, there's there's different uh, there's different kinds. He's not the only one who says racist things on here. Saying racist things that could just be somebody joking around, or that's just the neighborhood they grew up in. I grew up in, in Bayside, Queens, where like every one of my friends was a different nationality, or they were mixed. Or, you know, it was just not every one of my friends. There were there was more than one Italian person, more than one half Puerto Rican, half Italian, more than one Jewish person. But it was very extraordinarily diverse. There weren't a lot of black people or Indian people, but it was like everything else. There were a lot of Koreans and the racist jokes were told right and left and up and down. It, it was but it wasn't like but it wasn't racist. It was just there's a difference between that, between jokes, between ignorance you know, people that aren't educated or whatever, and then extremism and hatred. That's a whole different thing. Whole different thing. Dude, I can tell racist jokes with the best of them. I can start telling you some right now. Don't make me racist. The guy in the red shirt, any info on how he got caught? Um... Yeah, he, he was introduced, he was, from what I understand from reading the files, he was introduced to an undercover fed or a cop undercover, I forget if, if it was an undercover New York City police officer or an undercover federal agent, but the, but the NYPD was working with the feds on this. And somebody introduced him as being the undercover as a, uh, a gun dealer, somebody could get him guns. And, you know. It was a sting operation, and thank God they got him. Nicky Cola Cohen hates what he doesn't understand. I don't know. No, it wasn't a joke. There is one content creator wasn't joking. You're saying one content creator. I'm saying somebody saying racist jokes doesn't make them racist. You know, I don't know who you're talking about, for one. Or the context that it was said in. Jokes are one thing, but hatred is a lifestyle. It's one way to put it. They want him to spy on the guys. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If my suspicions are correct, and he's a... Uh, ongoing cooperator sooner or later the FBI will leak a picture of him on the couch with the daughter or the mother or whatever to a newspaper reporter they'll find a way to get that out there to embarrass them you know as retribution for you know the way their the grandfather thumbed it in the government's face what 30 something years ago And I, I'm not going to say that's hatred towards the grandfather, but maybe it's they want to send a message to anybody else, a cartel boss, whoever, who thinks they're going to, you know, be in New York City or in America and thumb their nose at law enforcement. I don't know. There's a lot of, you know, FBI agents, law enforcement, that they despise numerous members of that family, that last name. Maybe some of them have different reasons for doing so, but it's not a popular last name in law enforcement circles. Like if you're, if you're a Gotti, it's probably also if you're a Korea or anything like that, you're a trophy to them. I, I I've always said this. Not I've always said this, but I've said this for a long time. At least since I came to the realization of this, a police officer making an arrest 
if that cop or that FBI agent, whoever wants to write a book after they retire, if they, if they know that ahead of time, you're a trophy to them, not just if you're a high profile figure or you have a high profile last name, you're a, you're a trophy, not just in the sense of they might get recognition or be in the newspaper, you know, they'll get an award or a promotion or something or a pension bump. You're a trophy to them in the, in the form of money. You can be, you know, cause it's like, say you want to write a book after you retire or do a documentary about your time as a, I don't know, a task force guy, organized crime or drug task force, whatever. They may want to go on speaking tours at different colleges or foundations, wherever. And if they're going to do an hour long speech that they're going to get five G's for 10 G's, maybe 50 G's, I don't know, whatever that the case, they need interesting things to talk about. So if they lock up a, ho- a high profile person or a, a, no, a person with notoriety or a notable last name, etc., that's five minutes or 10 minutes out of their hour long presentation that might be a really interesting five or 10 minutes that people want to hear about. You're a trophy. So you better watch your ass. Yes. The tabloid will get that photo and the headline will read John Gotti granddaughter dates neo-Nazi. Well, let's say it's possible that let's say he's at their house and nothing occurred between them, right? If that was the case. Just if he's a picture of them sitting on the couch together and that gets released, people will think something happened between them. And the FBI will want that out there. Well, I shouldn't say the FBI, but there are agents within the FBI that will want that out there for numerous reasons. One, they might want to embarrass people in that family who they don't like, who they think fish that got away, you know, fishes that got away, whatever. They could use it as a tactic to, for what's called tickling the wires, something like that. Because then they'll have people in social clubs. When that hits the newspaper, they'll be talking about it on a wiretap somewhere that could be some chess piece, a chess move, a pawn moving across the chessboard as part of some much larger game. But it's, it's going to open up a conversation that day with an informant in the room that they could take it to some, they could lead into some other conversation that they're trying to get somebody to talk about. Maybe there's somebody that would have never had a conversation with that, that informant, but because that thing's in the newspaper, it opens the door, an avenue for conversation for an informant with someone to talk about some whole other different thing. Maybe some crime from the nineties regarding a member of that family, alleged crime that they're trying to get somebody to talk about. Who knows? The FBI, they are master chess players. They play dozens of moves in, in, in advance, generally speaking. I'm sure they have some agents who are idiots too, but like any other organization. But, you know, there, there's all kinds of different reasons why they would want to put something like that out there. Ain't nobody going to believe that kid had anything with that. You know what? She's a beautiful girl. It's, uh, and yeah, when he first said it, I didn't believe it. Uh, I thought he was totally lying that he was even at the house. I was like, get the fuck out of here. And then she said the next day, the mother, that he was there. I was like, wow, you got to be kidding me. FBI is dirty. Law enforcement in general plays dirty, you know? And there's different ways to look at that. Some people look at it and say, well, you're supposed to be the good guys. You shouldn't play dirty. They definitely shouldn't play dirty against regular civilians. Absolutely. Should they play dirty against organized criminal syndicates that are selling heroin or scamming or extorting innocent people? That's a whole other question. You know, it depends on your point of view. Some people will say, "Get lock those guys up, protect society. Other people will say, yo, you're doing shit that's worse than the street guys did. You're worse than they are. Other perspectives may say, no, nah, you have to be you have to be the good guys. It doesn't matter how bad they are. You have to get them the right way. It's different perspectives. Thanks, Tony Pizza too. So flow too. I don't believe FBS to be racist at all. 
I mean, it's a ridiculous thing. It's like people say, well, MRE can't be racist. Look, he's got, you know, black friends. Well, FBS is in pictures with far more black people than MRE is. It's, uh, you know, I know FBS people, I, it's been, it was said to me, oh, he said he said extra precious on the plane. Recently, I was on a plane. I felt like I was sitting next to uh, Wayne the Refrigerator Perry. That's what this, this person reminded me of, this female person with very large elbows. I was like, yo. But it's like, does that make somebody racist? No, I don't think so. That just, whatever. There's a huge difference between that and, you know, not letting somebody drink to the same water fountain because they have a different color skin or getting a tattoo of Hitler on your skin. That is a completely different thing. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to do a much more uh, in-depth show on this. But I, I can't do it from my phone. I probably could, you know, not doing it. What was he doing with this? What was he doing with this? Show some love, guys. Throw in a cash app. Contribute to uh, anti-Nazi, pro-American, independent investigative journalism. What was he doing with this? I'd love to know. He was trying to kill black people. We don't know that. It's not fair to say we don't know that. We don't know that can't say that don't make don't say stuff that you can't prove fps had racist stuff he hit the videos he said there was a problem with black woken in, in america come on chris again again you know what fps is not racist i've seen nothing how is he racist You know what I like about FBS? He stood up the bullies. He stood up the spoiled mob babies who probably never had anybody stand up to them in their lives. FBS, say what you want about him. For better, for worse, he exposed a neo-Nazi, him in gun smoke. Maybe nobody would have ever known about that. I would have been on here just donating to a neo-Nazi. <laughs> a lying informant going after lying informants. You got to love that. That's great. That's great. He's in a public service. Like him, don't like him, fall somewhere in between. Him, Gunsmoke, and the guy Kurt Franz, and whoever else was, in, was involved with exposing this guy. Common Sense, whoever was involved with exposing him, a neo-Nazi, they did a public service. Because everybody on here donating money to this guy, sending super chats, all that. How do you know that money wasn't going into extremist activities? How do you know that? Well, that device on screen would hurt a few people. If there were 35 uh, buckshots, ball bearings, whatever, that alone theoretically could kill 35 people they could kill a dog you know i don't i don't know where he's going to set this thing off it's hard for me to believe he would build something like this and not set it off this show is for educational and journalistic purposes only it's for 
mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. It's in the description. I should have said that at the, at the be beginning of the show. But uh, John Wolf said, blood money. You know what? On the, maybe, <coughs> excuse me. On the next show, I'll play a clip of uh, a neo-Nazi, one of his neo-Nazi podcast co-hosts, well, on their podcast, talking about he takes money in donations, but he gives it right back to the people. He sends people flyers and, and uh, flags and banners, things like that. He's trying to get people uh, motivated to be about it and not talk about it. Some some quote like that. It was something like that. And he said it several times, several things in, in the podcast where he's telling the audience, um, if you're going to donate money, donate to him, to Bruno, to MRE, because, you know, he sends the money back to the people. So, something to that effect. And uh, he's trying to recruit young guys and like youngsters and everything. Maybe he's out there trying to recruit people because he's giving the information on them up to uh, Uncle Sam. I don't know. FBS and Gunsmoke. Yeah, they exposed. I know Common Sense helped also. Um, but whoever was involved with exposing this guy, you did a public service. You did a service for your country. Straight up. And nobody could take that away from you. And if you don't have to like these guys, that's fine. Nobody's going to like everyone. But they did a, a service for their country. And I know there are people who know that, but they just don't want to admit it. They're the, they're the white version of Al Qaeda. That's what they are. How did this guy? So this guy, uh, <laughs> this, so this is what happened when they when they raided his house in 2015. They found these M class devices, and uh, the one, this one, amongst the others. See it right there with the others. They found these devices, and this one specifically was tested at a uh, a forensics lab to see. But that wasn't until like a month later when they when they did that test, because uh, they had to, they had to use like a robot to open this thing up because you know you I think it could blow up you, you know it could explode and kill the cop or the agent or whoever opening it up. They used a robot to open it up, and so yes, it was about a month after the arrest. And the forensics was done, and it said it was one of these M-class devices. I forget the specifics to it, but 35 pieces of buckshot, and it was in different sizes. The buckshot and a metal ring-like object and a piece of plastic attached to this thing that was covered in uh, medical tape, electrical tape, something like that. And... How come he was never charged for this? The charges weren't upgraded. Why? It's federal. These these M80s are federally illegal. Forget the state law in Rhode Island. They had this guy dead to rights on a whole bunch of charges. The ATF took possession of this uh, IED right here. <clears throat> he got that downward departure letter i don't think so because uh i believe a, a 5k1 one of those letters that's if you're getting sentenced for cooperating and you're going in front of a judge he didn't get sentenced the case the case just got dismissed now he might have got some other kind of a letter um you know i wish i had the clip loaded here but the uh it's on it's on my youtube if you go back a couple of videos on the videos i played it on the last live i did i believe or the one before that the last uh stream yard live that's titled angel god he threatens to sue me or the one before where it says or maybe on both the one before it says another gun case sex crimes the but if you go go through my videos there's a video on there called uh the federal investigation where 
it's uh after the case is dismissed he's got a a hearing to get his pro- return and seize property and the defense attorney and the prosecutor are saying that there's an ongoing federal investigation after this is after the case was dismissed this is like almost two months later this is in august it was dismissed in june and the defense attorney says to the judge yeah my i think the prosecutor says there's an ongoing investigation and, and the defense attorney's like yeah he got a letter from the department my cola Cohen got a, a, def- a letter from the, the from, from the department of justice to that effect yeah he, he got some kind of letter <laughs> he definitely got a letter but what's in it can he produce that now if he was thoroughly vetted if he was thoroughly vetted you know who would know about it and have a copy of that letter so your guns were all legally bought that was all cited all everything there was was all all legally bought and i would trade and sell them so your guns were all legally bought that was all cited all everything there was all 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 legally bought and i would trade and sell them where was it cited where was it cited Where was it cited? Can anybody tell me where it was cited? In Iraq, the terrorists put nails and ball bearing like that in IEDs. It causes a lot of damage. Um, listen, it's, 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 it's probably people around the world that are involved in struggles, whether the good guys or the bad guys. It's like a guerrilla tactics, you know, using doing things like that. So an IED could be a lot of things. Because he said, you know, it's funny too. He said, I got to find the clip. But he said, when I played the audio of him back in, uh, excuse me, when I posted the audio from his bail hearing, the official court recording, he did a stream where he was playing it and commenting on it. And he said, he's like, oh, this is the big lie right here. And the prosecutor said, he, well, the prosecutor said he had 18 improvised explosive devices. And he says, he's like, oh, an IED is like a thing like in, in Iraq, you know, like that you, you lay, that you, know, the, that you lay in the road where it destroys tanks or whatever, something like that. I forget his exact words, but an IED can mean all kinds of things. And he said too in that stream, oh yeah, I had two propane tanks in my bedroom propane tanks i don't i don't know what that was about but the now that is interesting though the prosecutor said 18 ieds and it was in one of the reports 18 ieds in the johnston police department report but it was actually over 20 m-class devices i think it was 21 or 22 i forget but now maybe they thought they were improvised because they have the other one in there i don't know and remember his, his attorney did not object to it in court so it's a mysterious case. Didn't Phil Testa get blown up by a nail bomb? Yes. They put it under his porch in Philly and uh, they blew up the chicken man in Philly that night. Chicken man was blown up. Yeah, it's from Bruce Springsteen's song called Atlantic City. Like they blew up the chicken man in Philly last night. There are different types of explosives. You can make a chemical bomb with household products. Uh, Again, this is for educational purposes only, this show. Nobody should be doing anything like that. You could hurt yourself trying to put something together. But... That's not nice. Let's go back. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All everything there was all, was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. Where was it cited? Where was it cited? 
where on earth was it sighted? Let me, uh, let me see if I can upload something real quick. Hang on. I heard a rumor with my ear that MRE was sharing. Uh, if you actually have proof of something like that, let me know. The shoe's not soon. He hit somebody on the highway. Kept it moving. Didn't stop for an accident report. Kept it moving. Got pulled over. Had no license. Didn't do any time. As a convicted felon. That's right. this I think everyone is afraid to speak in the chat out of fear of retribution I know some people are afraid of getting cut off or, you know, treated differently by uh, the queen bee over there. Most, I mean, that's what I believe. I'll have to watch replay. <clears throat> I'm going to do a, a more in-depth show. I'm, I'm on my phone. I don't have my computer here, but uh, I'm going to do a much more in-depth show about this whole thing. But that right there, you didn't miss much, but that right there in the picture is, uh, remember he said he got, it was only four M80s. Well, that's over 20 M class devices. One of which was fitted as an IED. It had uh, this right here. Had hey, that's from an X-ray. Thirty-five ball bearings, buckshot essentially, and uh, a ring, a metal ring-shaped object, and a piece of plastic, all uh, covered it, uh, covered up with tape, holding it all together, like medical tape. Look at this. What was he doing with this? He didn't get charged for that. Where is the coffee can? Uh, it's probably what he was referring to. This can. If you look at the evidence photo of... Uh... Let me see if I have it on my phone here real quick. I might have it here. Give me two seconds. I should have had this already uploaded. Hang on.
I think that's right there. See on the left by the book bag. I think that metal can canister, whatever the hell it is. I think that is this. But that would bring up the question, why didn't they show the M80s in the picture? The M-class devices and that IED. Why didn't they include that in the evidence photo that they released to the media? They released this to the media. They didn't have the other stuff in that picture. Why? Very mysterious case. Very mysterious case. With really only one answer that emerges, that he cooperated, that he was already a cooperator. It was a cover-up. They were definitely trying to cover some things up, I can tell you that. I'd like to know more about this. And something tells me. I'm going to find out. The metal can looks like an ammo can we used in the Army. Thank you for your service. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there. I know. All all bought, and I would trade and sell them. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All everything there was I know. All, all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. What was he doing with this? What was he doing with that, huh? I'm going to shut this down soon. But, uh... What was he doing with this? Five four, two 220 pounds at a Johnston, Rhode Island. A man with many mysterious criminal cases. everybody i'm turning this off have a good night everyone and guys have a good night it's been real and hold on one second damn he is only five four I don't know. I mean, A Light said he's 5'8 in his book. And it said in like different police bug shots, or whatever, that he was like 5'8. But I think in reality, he's like 5'6, five, 5'6 six, five, six and a half. I don't know.
Well, this was an exciting show, huh? I'm boring myself over here. I think he said 220. That's what I believe it's what the uh yeah, I believe that's what it says right there. I can't zoom in because I'm on my phone, but if somebody could read it, I believe that's what it says. Thanks, Bob. Dude, I'm boring myself over here. I feel like this, I feel like this was so boring, but uh, maybe you guys liked, enjoyed, you know. And I don't think anybody else could bring you something like this. If anybody would like to support independent uh, investigative journalism. Yeah, it was good. I don't know. I'm, I'm boring myself. I feel like taking this down. I don't even feel like leaving this up. Bobby. Bobby's the winner of... He won the uh, the fundraiser we did when we auctioned off the the poster FBS had of the, the John Gotti picture last... It was the last December for the Wounded Warrior Project to support uh, wounded military veterans in honor of the um, the heroes who gave their lives and sacrificed everything fighting the Nazis in World War II. Saved the world in the process. We can explore it more. I'm, I'm, I say this respectfully. I'm already exploring. I've got, there's more I found out, but I'm just not prepared to speak on it yet. But I had already announced the show, so I was like, you know what, let me go and do it. Law enforcement sensitive. That's uh that's from a report concerning the explosives. Thanks, Red Irish. Uh, if, if you, I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like I'm boring myself over here. But if you enjoyed this show, feel free to uh, throw something into the cash app. It's right there on screen, and it's in the description. It, you know, it's a lot, a lot of work finding stuff like this. It took a lot of work and effort to find certain things. I didn't hire no private investigators. Nothing. It was just me, just doing the doing the work. Yeah, people said, "Oh yeah, obsessed." No, if, let me tell you something. If I was focused on this, I would have found all this shit maybe a year ago. I don't know. Not a, a ten months ago, I would say eight, nine months, something like that. Hold my Doberman on him while I give this guy the back of my hand. What? So your guns were all legally bought. That was all sighted. All, everything there was, all, was all legally sighted. bought. And I would trade and sell them. You should monetize the channel for Super Chats. Uh, I think I'm like a thousand watch hours away from that. I'll be there soon. I gotta do a couple more videos and I'll be there. Cause I, you gotta have, I think you gotta have three thousand watch hours in the last three hundred sixty-five days to do that. I think I'm at like about sixteen hundred or very close to it.
Let's see if I can show you guys something else. Hang on. I got to... I have to send a letter tomorrow. I might have it here. Hang on a second. What happened here? You see this right here? This is me sitting with Elio Forcina and Gerard Marone. Two attorneys. They share a law office in Queens. Both of them have given me legal counsel. Elio gave me legal counsel. And Elio slandered me, straight lied on me. This guy, I thought this guy was my friend. He straight fucking lied on me on Angel's show on uh, October 2nd. Straight lied on me. A lawyer who gave me legal counsel lied about me while trying to act like he was my friend. I'm being advised right now to notify the New York State Bar Association. That's the advice I'm getting right now, which is not really not something I want to do, to be honest with you, because I like him. He's a quack in a lot of ways, but I know him to be a good-hearted person, and it's not something I want to do. But what do I do? An attorney who lied on me takes part in a fucking smear campaign against me. What if it happens again a year from now? Well, I say, oh, well, that happened on that show. Oh, it's on private or whatever. Well, it's not on private, but it might. I don't know what's gonna, how it's going to play out. But what do I say? Well, they say, oh, why didn't you say something a year ago or five years ago when this first happened? What do I, what do, I do? What do I do? This guy says uh, MRE is not a neo-Nazi because 15 of his friends vouched for him, said he's not, right? That he would just admit it if he was. This is one of his friends. He brought him on Angel's show. Let me take the comment off. He brought him on Angel's show, this guy. A neo-Nazi ex-police officer. This same guy. You wish you were pure Aryan like me. You would fucking kill to switch bodies with me. You fucking spook! That guy's a neo-Nazi that he brought on the Angel Show. Brought him on Angel Show. People said, oh, he can't be a neo-Nazi. He's got a patent tattoo. This is a neo-Nazi. Right. This is a neo-Nazi praising Patton. General Patton. Because they use his image for their own propaganda. Forget them. Right. Exactly. Forget them. Forget their names. Forget everything they said. Even great leaders like Patton forget things he said about yeah. the war. But that's that's a major thing I think a kid should know. But we were... I didn't know about Patton's quotes growing up. They said we, were... we fought the wrong enemy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right. And uh, Berlin gave him the blues. And uh, it, was, it was a depressing experience to realize what they had been used to do. And he said, to, we've killed a great race of people, the, the Germans. The German people. But... Yeah. That's this guy right here. Bayside Nazi, guilty of buying illegal firearms. Minor, his name is Joseph Minor, supported racial violence. That's him. At that Hitler party that he helped organize, you know who drove him there? That guy Minor rode shotgun in this guy's truck with a bunch of other neo Nazis that were there from different countries in the back seat. Some of them from different countries in the back seat. He was chauffeuring them there. Who's riding shotgun? This guy. We'll talk more about that. Elio was a Q person. I think he still is a Q person. I'm not sure. I, I, I hadn't spoken to him in probably over a year. And then, hold on. Q person, I wouldn't take legal advice from a believer of QAnon. 
listen, somebody could still know the law about certain things. Um, I first met him in person in 2016. We uh, we had spoken on the phone for the first time. I want to say early 16. I don't remember. But the long story short, it's uh, well, I'll, I'll discuss this at a later date. But uh, you know, there were things he he offered to sue people for defamation on my behalf. Several people. I didn't take him up on it, but I, this guy went on Angel's show and lied about me, someone he gave legal counsel to. What do I do in that situation? Mark, he's an, <laughs> he's an Oompa Loompa-sized sex case terrorist, 5'2", and weighs more than a heavyweight boxer, LOL. Uh... That's an interesting insight. I didn't think about that. He's a, if he's five four according to that paperwork. If that's accurate, I don't know because I've again, I saw like with a light it's uh, paperwork that said he was like five eight or whatever. He's not five eight, not to my knowledge. Mark, you're welcome to come on if you want. Or, or otherwise, if somebody wants to come on, and make this interesting. You're welcome, but uh, otherwise, I'm going to shut it down. Because I'm boring myself. It's up to you guys. There's the link. These little Nazis are cowards. But networks of these people can be dangerous. You never know until it's too late. One of them can be dangerous. They're not all cowards. A lot of them are. A lot of people in other groups are cowards too, but like I wouldn't say they're all cowards. Um, but a lot of them are, are mentally deranged. And they get radicalized online, a lot of them. And yeah, there's like online networks and just one of them can be dangerous by themselves. They call it a leaderless resist- resistance. That's what they call it. Where, you know, they're not in a group or a cell or anything. Just one guy or a small group of people acting on their own. Not under some central command. Like, uh... Hold on. There's a reason he walks around with Doberman real guard dogs. I've just woke up, Chris. I'm on my phone. Otherwise, I would. I've been listening for 15 minutes, though. Good work. I, I don't know if this is good work. I'm just fucking boring myself over here, but... Thank you, though, for the comment. Mark, let me show you in case you didn't see it. Remember, he said he got caught with just it was just four M80s. It wasn't 18 IEDs, improvised explosive devices that the prosecutor and the paperwork said. That right there is one of the evidence photos. Let me take the comment down. That's one of the evidence photos. That's I think that's. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, well, I got the the wording on there, so I can't see it all. But I, I believe it's twenty one or twenty two M class devices, like M eighties and others in that category. And one of them is an it's an IED, an M class device fitted with thirty five pieces of buckshot in different sizes, ball bearings, essentially. This is it from an X ray, because they're trying to determine what it was. 35 ball bearings, a metal ring-like, ring-shaped object and a piece of plastic. And it was like all like held together with tape, like medical tape. And there was another kind of tape. I forget what it said. Electrical, maybe. I don't remember. According to the ATF, it's an illegal explosive, not a firework. According to this firework store in Pennsylvania, Make no mistake, M80s are not fireworks. They are dangerous explosives. It should not be handled by fireworks consumers. Yeah, they're many, they're many explosives. That's what they are. They were high-end sparklers. I didn't hear them say that, but that's actually kind of funny if they did say that. And please send me the clip if so. But I didn't hear them say that.
designed to cause maximum casualties. How did, on earth did these charges vanish? So from what I understand from my research, they didn't do the forensics on that IED until a month, about, about a month after he was arrested. And the charges didn't upgrade at all for the IED. He was, um, and the M, the M class explosives alone are federally illegal. Forget the state of Rhode Island, and their laws and the ATF, a federal agency here in America took possession of that IED after the forensics was done. I believe it's my understanding. I'd have to go back and check what I found, but I believe the ATF also took control of the guns. They seized the guns and just all the, all of the evidence from uh, what was seized from his apartment. The only thing given back to him was his, uh, his laptop computer. And they, it said, they kept the authorities kept his cell phone and his hard drive. Why they would keep his phone and his hard drive, give, but give him back his laptop. It's a very mysterious case, but no, he's a cooperator. That's it. Tony Ducks, Kaz, it is good work. You were exposing a lying neo Nazi POS. Well, thank you. He brought this guy an angel show. Yo, that's crazy. That he that he lied right on your show. I don't know who that guy is. Very mysterious having no outcome and this being a second gun charge that we know of. That we know of. That we know of. Now let's not forget. Mark, I don't know if you saw this. 2009. While I'm driving on a highway, he hit somebody. He hit their car and didn't pull over. You know, like most people would. Hey, we just had a little accident here on the highway. He was driving on the highway, switching lanes, and he tapped the lady's car. Hit somebody's car while driving, not in the parking lot. You know, like a, a fender bender pulling out of the drugstore parking lot or going to get clothes in a supermarket and then in, in a like a clothing store parking lot. No, on a on a highway. Driving down a highway. He hits a lady and keeps it moving. Lady calls the cops. The cops have a car already on the highway or nearby, I forget what it said, the report. They set up a couple exits down. And she's following, she's following this guy and talking to the authorities on the phone and telling them where he's going, what exit he's by, whatever. They see them, the cops, they pull this guy over. He doesn't have a license. No license and a hit and run. As a convicted felon with multiple tr previous traffic infractions. Doesn't get prosecuted. Doesn't get put in jail for that. Doesn't, I, I mean, somebody, most people in that position would have probably at least done a couple of weeks, something, something would have happened. Even if it was just a week or probation or something, something would have happened. You were a convicted felon. Huh? Well. Someone did some wonderful work vetting this guy. Absolutely. Let's play it again. Hang on. Absolutely. Mark, did you see this? So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there was, all, was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there was, I know. All, it was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. Where was it cited? Where? I'd love to know where. 
up front, he may be polite and all, but on the road, it's a different story, evidently. <laughs> it's a doozy for sure. Korea says he knows. Oh, I mean, he said it. It was cited that he bought the guns legally. Where, where, where was it cited? And he said that the night he got exposed, April 26, 2022. Where was it cited? I'd love to know where. Who looked into MRE? They ignored a lot. I looked into MRE, and I found a lot. Which anybody else, at least the majority, some things I probably found because I really put in the effort, but any competent private investigator, researcher, paralegal, which Dominic purports himself to be, would have found maybe not all what I found because I really put in the work over time, but would have found enough. That The Patrick Little video, that was one of the first things I found. The Patrick Little video at Brown University. That was easy to find because I said to myself, where would I find something like this? All right, he's a neo-Nazi. I want to look into this. Where would I find something like this? Not like, like that video, but where would I find things that pertaining to him if he was involved with these people? They said, okay, I did a little research. This is probably where I would find something on this website, BitChute. And I went on there and very quick I found that video. So, you know, if Dominic or whoever had vetted him, they would have found that same video. And they would have found this, this, this criminal case and, and other ones. They would have found, what would they have found? Hang on, hang on, hang on. They would have found this, sex crimes, alleged sex crimes against juveniles. A suspect, excuse me, let me correct that. A suspect in sex crimes against juveniles, plural. I'm not saying he sexually abused the kid. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this report says he's a suspect or was a suspect in sex crimes against juveniles. So anybody vetting this guy would have found this and would have said, hey, we need more information on this. We're not saying you did it, but can you tell us what happened? There's, there's more. There's more paperwork involved with this this incident. But it's all redacted. You can't see anything on it except for like just like one or two things or whatever. It's, it's, it's all vague. It's bland. Anybody vetting him would have said, would have found this and said, we're not saying you did it. Well, I think most people would take this approach. We're not saying you did it. But our client, Mr. Kriya, or Angel, or whoever, whoever sent us to vet you we need to know more about this because they're putting their name on the line to have your back and say you're not a neo-nazi you're not a cooperator you're not an informant any of those things but we found this so this is troubling so can you can you prove this wrong can you introduce us to other people that were president when the, who made this report who made this report well are they willing to unredact it are you willing to unredact it? you can go to the police station right now and they'll unredact probably the majority of it, except for, you know, the names of the underaged people. Especially if they're still underage, which they may be, but... Will you go do that? Will you go get this cleared up for us? So our client wants to have your back. Will you go get this cleared up? Why hasn't he already... What, what, how long was it that I put this out? What? Over 10 days ago, something like that. I think it was September 28th, if I remember correct. I think. So it's what, like two weeks ago? More than two weeks ago? Anybody out, anybody with nothing to hide would have been, I would say, most people, because some people are just stupid or, or whatever, just a lost cause for them. I, I don't know. The majority of people with nothing to hide would have been at that police station. Unredacted. I didn't do this. I did not do this. I can't have this. Something to that effect. At least that's my opinion. So this guy has zero convictions and multiple arrests since the year 2000. LOL. 
The only thing he's pushing back against is his informant status. This is a real bad guy all around. Remember you said on your show, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, something. I don't remember what it was. Oh, I, I'm not saying this is an insult towards you, but I was just kind of, I found it funny. I was laughing to myself because there are things that I know that I can't, I just can't speak on because it may betray certain sources of information or whatever, but, oh, you know, I don't think Chris has the goods on him with the informant stuff. He would have put it out there. I don't think he has, he has that. Okay. But as you can see, I've got a lot (laughs) and I keep finding more. But, uh, but I don't say that's an insult towards you, but it just, it's, uh, when it comes to doing research, investigative journalism, things of that nature, I've been compared to a dog looking for a bone. Like the dog doesn't know where, where in the backyard that bone is buried, but he can smell it and he knows it's there and he's going to find it. So... Why the heart attack if it wasn't stressful? Well, he may have had long-term heart issues. That's possible. I'm not going to make shit up about the guy. But but the uh, I can imagine it was, probably, it was probably very stressful for him. Very stressful. Because he already, I know he had anxiety issues and other things. But it was probably very, very stressful for him to get pinched with all of <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just getting over a cold. So. But it was probably very stressful for him to be caught with those guns and IED illegal explosive M class devices, whatever you want to call them illegal, you know, he's not a guy built for doing time. Do a quick Google search and see what comes up on him. At the very least, they see a ton of stuff there. Yeah. You see enough. At least you see enough. I can only speak for myself on this one. When this all this stuff first started coming about out about this guy in April 2022, April, April 26th, that was the day it went public. This whole thing, I felt there was one thing to say. I don't know what's in his heart. He's denying it, and I'm not even saying this was the right thing. Maybe he should have just been denounced because of that tattoo. I don't know, but it's one thing to say he's not in his heart. It's we don't know what's in his heart and the informant stuff. Look, he's denying it. Let's give him a chance to prove it wrong. Okay, even though common sense says. He's a, he's a cooperator. There's no way that case would have just disappeared. Okay, you want to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, let him prove it wrong, whatever. Okay, all right. But to the people that just went out there and said things like, <laughs> to the people who just went out there and said, nah, he's not an informant. We know. We looked it up. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there was, I know. All, was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. Let me tell you something. There's no way to look that up in like 24 hours. Impossible. Because even if he gives you the documents from his case, you still have to independently verify them. You have to get them from the court yourself to make sure what he's given you is legit and not doctored in any way, not redacted or altered, whatever. Now, I think it's very possible Dominic knew who this guy was ahead of time before he was denounced because before he was exposed, I should say, because he, uh, I said this, I believe, at the beginning of the show, I think I did, that I, it's my understanding, I'm not saying this is a fact, but it's my understanding that Dominic had sent this guy, like, uh, we push back t-shirts or hats or, or a hat and a t-shirt, something to that effect, that would mean he has this guy's address, All right? Most likely, unless he sent it to a, a, a third party to give it to him, but with that address, you would know who he was. Now, do you actually spend the time to look up the name? I don't know, but a quick Google search of that name. His name in Rhode Island, the Nazi stuff pops right up. So did you know something like that? You didn't tell everybody? I, or, or maybe he didn't really know who he was until April 26th. I don't know. What I do know is I didn't see nowhere where it's cited that he bought the guns legally. I'm saying there's been an incident report which is self-explanatory. Somebody reported an incident of sex crimes against juveniles. Yes, but people do get falsely accused of things. That does happen. And there's some more I learned about that situation, but I'm not ready to speak on it just yet. I shouldn't speak on something like that without knowing more 
about certain parts of it. I'll say that. People do get, and I'm not saying he was falsely accused. I'm not saying he wasn't. But people in general do get falsely accused of things. It happens all the time. It's, uh, but what I know, according to law enforcement, he was a suspect in sex crimes against juveniles. I want the name of the attorney and law firm. They're good. I forget what you're referring to. Have you tried to contact the Johnston police station? Because this guy has the worst excuses for everything. He's got good people fooled. I see, LOL. The explosive stuff was sealed with the JPD. I can tell you that much. They weren't releasing that. The, uh, but Chris has his ways. Cass Prozen says he's boring himself all while dropping these warheads. His tolerance for this is, a, is alarming. Is that an insult? I'm not sure. That's a funny way to put things. <laughs> it's the sex crimes against juveniles that bothers me. Blanket hitting rats ain't my thing. Mine either. But he's got so many good people fooled. As for the white supremacist stuff, it's undeniable. Yeah, that's a way to put it. Um... Yeah, hating rats or whatever, it's like, it's corny. You know, unless you were, like, in the streets or something. But it, it's, uh, to me, it's corny. But to dislike people that cooperated, you know, they sold out their friends or whatever, okay. And I, I felt that way for a very long time. And I, I still do feel that way in certain ways. But not everything is black and white. Like, when you get to know somebody sometimes and you hear their reasoning for something, you know, it, it's, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. But it's like saying all cops are good or all cops are bad. All teachers are good or all teachers are bad. All Catholic priests abuse kids. No, not all of them did. It's like, so a lot of things in life are, are great. They're not black. They're not white. A lot of it's in between. Now, I don't support lying informants. I don't support lying on people at all in general because that's fucked up. You know, it's like assassinating somebody's character with words. No, I, I didn't. I didn't take it as like an insult, but I just, I did. I, didn't, <laughs> I, I guess it, I didn't. I wasn't really insulted. I, didn't, I don't think he meant it like that. It's all good. It was just I just didn't know how to put it into context. After this recent second felony occurrence, I asked MRE what's up with this recent finding, and he told me he's tired of talking about guns and block me. Uh, sounds believable. That that does sound like something he would do. Did he do it? Can you show proof? Because. Respectfully, I'm not going to just go along with information about somebody because um, somebody could do it to me. But that does sound like something he would do. And not just me, they could do it to somebody I care about. And that's just something I don't believe in. It's just, you know, uh, anybody can make a false accusation about anybody. And unfortunately, it might be believed. That's unfortunate. I believe in the truth. You know, with politics, yeah, politics too. It's like, I'm not really for the left or for the right. I'm for the truth, whatever that is. What's the truth about what's really going on? For better or for worse? Let's tell that, that story. Mark, uh, I don't know if we're here for this. You see that can on the left by the book bag? This see, this is interesting to me. This is interesting. That can, I believe, is this. Where they found the, uh, the M-Class devices. I think I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's this. Regardless, why didn't they show pictures of these M-Class devices in the evidence photo that they released to the media? Why didn't they show the IED in that photo? Why? That's interesting. I don't know. Maybe they knew he was a cooperator or something, but may I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to give them certain information at the time. 
I, I don't know. It's just a lot of mysterious stuff in this case. In all his cases, he's got a list of criminal cases he didn't do, he didn't get in trouble for. Hit some lady's car on the highway. Kept it moving. Pulled over. No license. Lies to the cop. Convicted felon. Doesn't even get probation for this. Something. Yeah, right. They lay out every single item they, that they grabbed in the raid. Why? Because and that's one thing I wondered. Why don't they? The prosecutor said in court, eighteen improvised explosive devices. So why weren't they in the evidence photo? And he said, "Well, the prosecutor's lying." And I'm saying, why would the prosecutor lie about that? And his lawyer didn't say, "No, that's not true." In court, I posted the audio, of the bail hearing. You can hold, see, listen to the whole thing. It's like twelve minutes long. It's on my YouTube. Under it's called uh, the gun case. I think it's in the description to this video, actually. But his lawyer didn't say, no, that's not true, Your Honor. The lawyer just acknowledged that they're very serious charges and said he has a history of mental health issues. Now, he's trying to get his bail lowered. Why wouldn't he say, Your Honor, this is not true. We're going to prove this wrong. 18 IDs. What do you mean? But it was actually, I think it was 21 or 22 M-class explosives. One of which was fitted with 35 pieces of buckshot, ball bearings that could theoretically kill 35 different people. Huh? Yeah, and he, and he goes on those shows and he's like, oh, I never lie. Why would I lie? Why would I lie about that? I don't know. Why would you? What are you just gonna admit it? Yeah, I'm a I'm, you're an informant. What was he doing with this? What was he doing with this? Was he gonna turn the rest of them into that? What was he doing? I'm signing off. I got to get up tomorrow. Everyone, you guys have a good night. I'm going to leave you with this. I will leave you with this. So your guns were all legally bought. That was all cited. All, everything there was, I know. All, was all legally cited. bought. And I would trade and sell them. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. Donate to my cash app. Support independent investigative journalism. It's for a worthy cause. Exposing a, a neo-Nazi scumbag. Peace, Mark. Have a good night, everyone. Peace.